Just recently, I've received an email from a Mr. Jonathan Sum of NHT Loudspeakers. Now, when I received this email, I thought to myself, NHT Loudspeakers, I'm sure I've heard of that name before, but I just couldn't think for the life of me where I'd heard of it. I actually thought they were a brand that were around in about the 1990 time period, and they were a brand that designed a flat panel loudspeaker that had been designed so you could place it onto your wall like a picture. Through further investigation, I found out that I was a little bit off, and the brand I was thinking of wasn't called NHT, it was called NXT. Does anybody remember them? Must be 25, 30 odd years ago this design came out, and then poof, it just seemed to have disappeared. Well, the same sort of thing seems to have happened with NHT. So it seems that even though I thought I'd heard of NHT, and I thought they'd been in the UK, I now come to realise that I didn't really know who NHT were at all. So I decided to do a little bit of in, a little bit of investigating and sort of turned on my computer to see what information, what reviews, what end user feedback I could find out about the NHC brand. The good news is that most of the feedback, well pretty much all of it, was very, very positive indeed. So this obviously picked up my interest in their range of loudspeakers. What I found out was that they were kind of had a relation or there was some DNA in them from the brand that some of you out there may well be aware of, of a, of a brand called Acoustic Research. Now, I've seen these speakers before, and I know a lot of people speak very, very highly of them. But one of the designers of Acoustic Research was called Ken Cantor. Now, he left Acoustic Research and set up NHT with a partner. It seems like, from what I read, NHC were very, very successful and the reviews on them are absolutely fantastic about their acoustic suspension design. Now, we know that this design in 2023 isn't very popular at all because most loudspeakers today have got a port on them either on the front or on the back. But the NHC loudspeaker design doesn't actually use a port. And the reviews that I read about them, to me, this was very, very interesting. Why was it interesting? Well, that's a good question. Well, the reason they were very, very interesting to me personally was because I made a video about three years ago where I was talking about the difficulties that I'd had in this particular room of getting a good sound. Now, there's nothing special about this room at all. In fact, it's an average sized room for the sort of typical house you buy in the UK and probably most of Europe. Today, they build houses that are like rabbit hutches. They're absolutely tiny. So your offices and your second bedrooms, etc. are absolutely tiny. You're lucky if you get three by three. Now, I think this particular room I'm in now is probably three by two. And I made a video explaining how do you get good sound in a small room and how difficult it is. And I found the only solution I had in this particular room was to go desktop audio. In other words, to have the loudspeakers directly in front of me so that they were hitting my ears before they had a chance to bounce off of the wall. Because any speaker that I put in this room, because it was ported, was creating havoc with resonances that were bouncing all around the room. And I just couldn't get a good sound in this room at all. So when I read about the NHC loudspeakers and their no port on them at all, their acoustical suspension design, I was very, very interested in them. Now, the history of NHT is quite interesting, to say the least. Even though the reviews were very, very positive, they actually went bust in the year 2009. Now, I'm hoping that I'm getting my history correct here, so if I'm not, please forgive me, and if anybody would like to correct it, then please, again, let me know. But it seems like in about the year 2009, they went bust. Now, one of the original members of NHT was the person who sent me the email, Mr. Jonathan's son. Now, him and his factory, now the factory, when I talk of the factory, it's the factory who made the original NHT loudspeakers. So they had all the design, the drivers, the tooling, everything to do with NHT the factory had. So what the factory and Mr. Jonathan's son did is they approached NHT and they bought the name and the brand and everything to do with NHT. 
But that was quite a long while ago, so you may be thinking to yourself, well, why haven't we heard of NHT since then? And the answer is, I don't really know, but one of the problems that they may have faced is that they tend to, their, their business model changed, where before they were going through dealers, they were now going selling direct. Now, to me, I don't think it's a brilliant idea going selling direct. Now, you as a viewer out there may turn back to me and say, well, you're bound to say that you're a dealer. You obviously want to sell a product so you can make a sale and obviously your commission on it. Well, that is true, obviously. But on the other hand, there are a lot of negatives by selling direct. What are those negatives? Basically, say for example, I wanted to buy NHC loudspeakers here in the UK or I was living in Spain or someone in Germany, Italy or wherever and they wanted to buy NHC loudspeakers. And once they bought them, they decided those loudspeakers weren't for them. They've then got the hassle and aggravation of packing them up and sending them back to another country. You've got the shipping costs. You've got, oh, are they going to get damaged in transport? What about customs? Now I have to do importing myself and I know what a hassle importing and exporting can be. It's a lot of hassle and it's a lot of paperwork, especially since Brexit, it's even more hassle trying to send things into Europe. It's just really not worth the aggravation. So to me, to have a dealer or a distributor in the country, it cuts out that aggravation. It makes possibilities of selling your product more viable because People don't want hassle when they're buying things. If they don't like it, they don't want it, the aggravation of sending something back to another country. So it seems like now that NHT are sort of once again changing their business model to include dealers and distributors to sell their product. Another fantastic beauty about the NHT loudspeakers is their price. Now, when we think of 1990 and a loudspeaker in 1990, let's say, that cost £200, the chances are that that loudspeaker in 2023 is probably going to set you about, what, £500 to £600? You're going to be surprised to know that the price of NHT loudspeakers are pretty much exactly the same as what they were all those years ago. They've beaten inflation, and we all know about inflation at the moment, don't we? It's just out of control. But the beauty of the NHC loudspeaker is the price of these loudspeakers are more or less the same as what they were 20, 30 odd years ago. That is fantastic news. So I was talking to Mr. Jonathan Sun of NHT, and we decided that, yeah, I'd like to give them a try because I'm the kind of the person that likes to explore new brands, to bring new brands into the market. So for me, it was a challenge and something interesting that I wanted to personally listen and I wanted to give them a try and see if finally I could find something that would work in this room. So Mr. Sun sent me the loudspeakers and I ordered a few and the two main ones that I was really concentrating on was the Super Zeros and the Super Ones. Now the Super Zeros by magic, have just appeared there behind me. There you are, you can see them just behind me. I'm just pointing there with my thumb. They're the Super Zeros. And they are tiny, absolutely tiny little loudspeakers. Lovely little things. Don't take up any space whatsoever at all. Also, the design is basically the same as what they were 25, 30 years ago. There's been some minor revisions to make them a little bit more modern, but we're basically talking about the same loudspeaker and the same sonic signature of what people enjoyed 25, 30 years ago. Again, to me, that is something very, very encouraging and pleasing. So anyway, I, w I was so eager to try these loudspeakers to see if they'd work in this horrible little room I've got here. And what I did is I set them up with uh, Akisi's Audio, uh, E40 stereo amplifier, which I think is about 40, 50 watts. A Orn uh, network player, which plays all music that I've got stored on a NAS. And a little Orn Flamingo DAC, tube DAC, 269 or pounds, something like that. So it's basically a cheap entry-level system to go with the loudspeakers. So did they work in this room or not? Were they another foul disaster? Happily, they weren't. They were absolutely fantastic. I was 
pretty much blown away, in fact, at how good they sound. Because sometimes when you get, a, one, a cheap speaker and two, a tiny little speaker, you tend to think of a hard, brittle, a sound that you don't want to listen to for very long. Well, you can say goodbye to that kind of thinking completely because, one, these loudspeakers do not, and I stress, do not sound like their price. The price of them, after shipping, importing and everything, is £240 a pair here in the UK. And I, I can tell you, hand on heart, that these things will sound like or compete with loudspeakers in that sort of 400 no, four, I'd probably say 500 actually, 500 to 600 price bracket. Really, honestly, they are that good. These are exceptionally good loudspeakers. Two, they created no problem whatsoever in this horrible, nasty little room. There was no bass boom at all. Bass, because there's no port on them, was lovely and tight, just how I like it. Lovely, controlled, lovely bass. Beautiful it was. What are you going to say to me? Well, it's a tiny little speaker. It's not going to be producing any bass to cause any problems anyway. Well, yeah, you're right to an extent. But when you've got a small, tiny little room like this, there is actually bass there, and it is a nice, easy-to-follow bass. Very tuneful, easy to follow. As I say, no boomliness, no coloration. The sound on them, you can really turn up the wick on the Keys' amplifier, and they don't harden up at all. You know, normally with cheaper loudspeakers, the more volume you give them, they sort of harden up and become brittle and aggressive sounding. Not so for these little things. They just get louder and louder remain composed and completely in control. They really are quite a remarkable loudspeaker. Sounds like I'm shilling here, doesn't it? But honestly, they are remarkable loudspeakers. So what I thought I would do next is, I, I did actually have a subwoofer here by a brand called Well Rounded Sound, and they've actually got a subwoofer that's sealed as well. So I connected the two up, and I, I can say in a room, even though it's this small, you can actually get away with a subwoofer on these. In a, in a bigger room than what I've got here, 3 by 2 metres, I would say definitely you do need a subwoofer with these. But in this little room, I was, I was not sure whether or not I could get away with a subwoofer or not. And again, I'm pleased to say you can. Again, as long as it's a sealed subwoofer. Much more tighter bass, much more tuneful. I'll tell you what as well. After listening to Acoustic Suspension Systems, design type of loudspeaker, as I say, a sealed port. There's no way you want to go back to a ported design. It's really strange, actually. There are some negatives of having a sealed port, and that is that the sensitivity is much lower. With a ported design, the sensitivity will be higher, meaning they're easier to drive, but you get that coloration in the base. You get that bloominess in the base. The NHT... Super 1s are harder to drive. You do have to turn up the volume on your amplifier a little bit, but so what? The bass is so much cleaner, tighter and better controlled. I would rather have a lower sensitivity speaker and a bass that doesn't boom than a higher sensitivity speaker with a port that's chuffing and booming away. I know for sure which one I definitely prefer to have. Again, adding a subwoofer, I think it does improve the sound a little bit. Negatives? Yeah, there are there are is a negative. Um, you, you're not actually spoilt for choice. It's a bit like the old Ford. You can have it in any colour you want, as long as it's black. You get black gloss. Um, to me, it looks a little bit dated, black gloss. I think it was nice when it was new, about 15 years ago. But as I say to me, a little bit dated maybe. It's very difficult to keep clean. The dust that these things pick up is terrible. Um, fingerprints? Yeah, um... I'm not particularly keen on black gloss. I have suggested it to Mr. Sun if, like in the future, there's a possibility of going for like a, a type of wood finish. I think it will look a lot nicer. And I think it opens up more customers that also probably feel the same way as me towards black gloss. And as far as negative goes, I, I think that's probably about it. I don't think for a speaker that sounds this good, for this beer money kind of price um i've got absolutely no complaints about it at all i think it sounds absolutely magical it's fun 
to listen to. It's what music should be about. Now, everybody likes a good sound. And to me, I've got my limits and I'm not particularly um, taken in with the high end. The high end doesn't massively appeal to me. I can listen to high end loudspeakers or go to a high end show and I tend to find I, get, I tend to get a little bit bored of the sound of them. At first they sound amazing, but after a while there's I don't find there's much fun in very high end sounding loudspeakers and systems. But these things, they are just bags of fun for not much money. What's not to like as far as I'm concerned? As I said, I did try the other one, the next model up, and um it's sort of like the BMW 601 and 602, where the 601's quite small and the 602 is, is quite large. It's the same thing with these. The, the Super 1s are quite a bit bigger than the Super Zeros. And I wanted to try the Super 1s in this room. And when you first put them on, you can appreciate that they are better sounding. They do cost, I think, about £140 extra, which we're not talking about a huge amount of money, but they do sound better and the bass is more impactful, really. You can feel the kick, much more kick and control in that bass. But uh, again, there's that problem of it start. It was borderline of creating a few problems in this particular room. Now, the Super Ones are extremely revealing, I think, for a speaker, uh, that price, and they will tell you exactly what's on the recording. On the recording that's good, the Super Ones in this room will sound absolutely heavenly, beautiful sounding. But there are some recordings, as we all well are well aware of, that are absolutely dreadful. I don't know who produced them or mixed them, but the bass on them is just ridiculously poor. And the Super Ones will show that up. And as I say, it will start to excite the room nodes in here and um, it becomes a little bit unlistenable. So sometimes we think, well, if I spend more money, I'm going to get a loudspeaker. But to me, that's not always the case. You've got to take into consideration your room, the size of your room. And will that loudspeaker work in my room? And the Super Zeros work better in this room than what the larger Super Ones do. So you're saving yourself a little bit of money by making the right choice. As I say, sometimes we tend to think spending more is going to get us a better sound. But that, unfortunately, is not always the case, as it's been proved here with these lovely little super ones I've got here behind me. Both are absolutely top-notch speakers, and for the price, it's absolutely ridiculous how good they are. I'm, so, I'm sorry if I'm, I sound like I'm shilling here a little bit, but I, I can tell you I'm not. I like to call the spade a spade, and if something's good, I'll say it's good. And if it's something that I'm not particularly impressed with, I, I just don't bother kind of reviewing it but I, I'm really yeah, I am taken aback at how good these things are put the super ones in a room that's a few meters larger and they will absolutely sing and they will sound better than the super zeros but as I say for a room this size these super ones I tell you they'll absolutely blow you away and why more people don't know about in um, NHT well that remains a mystery well, thanks for watching this little impression, little, um, little, um, yeah, little thing I've made. And have a good day. Take care, and see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye now.